I was asked to do a video on how to do a fabric face mask. So I've got two squares of seven and a half inch uh, fabric. I'm starting um, just inside one corner away from the edge, much like how you would sew a bean bag together. So the fabric is right sides together, meaning the pretty sides are hidden like the inside of a sandwich right now. I sewed right up to the corner or about a three eighths of an inch from the corner, whatever distance I'm stitching from the other edges. And then I'm putting the needle down into the fabric so I can lift my foot and sneak a piece of quarter inch elastic. I'm gonna put the edge right up against the edge but inside the sandwich. Um, you might choose to go ahead and pin this if you're not comfortable sandwiching it like this or pre-stitch the elastic down at its those corner points. You just wanna make sure that the elastic is not all the way against the, the um, top edge. You're kind of moving it away, um, far enough away that it can, um, it won't get caught in the seam allowance. Now, making sure my elastic is not all twisted inside there. I'm putting it in here, look and see how it's like, it's not directly against this edge, it is against this edge. But I've got a little space here. Okay, I'm gonna keep going, kind of pin that with my finger. Like I said, use real pins if uh, you're not comfortable doing that. Put my needle down. I often use the needle on my sewing machine almost like a pin. It kind of holds things in place for me. Put the foot back down. Now I'm going to sew straight across. This is what's going to be the upper edge of the mask, like what would be against my nose. As I approach the next corner, I stop before I get there with my needle down. Uh, not far enough. One more stitch. I lift. I turn and I'm gonna grab another piece of elastic to sandwich in there between the two layers of fabric. Um, putting that cut edge of elastic against the outer cut edge of the fabric and um, pushing it right close up next to the needle. Foot down, stitch over my elastic. I'm using the edge of my presser foot for uh, my seam allowance. So that's roughly a three, three eighths inch seam allowance and I'm doing that because it's easy and I like easy I've been making these all day long and um, trying out different techniques some with the serger some without the serger some just with a sewing machine trying um, to figure out what is the fastest method trying some assembly line techniques Okay, I'm at this bottom edge. This is the part that would be like under my chin. And I'm gonna sew across, but I'm gonna leave an opening here. Again, much like, am I gonna backstitch? Much like I would a, um, I'm sewing a bean bag or something. All right, I'm gonna clip my corners. This is not a necessary step, but if you cut the, a little bit of that excess fabric off, then when, when you flip it right sides out, um, it'll just, um, look a little nicer. Those edges won't get all bunchy inside there. So flip it right sides out. Hopefully you didn't catch your elastic in the wrong places, like ca accidentally catching it in the seam here or something. If you did it right, your elastic should be close to the edge. If your elastic is farther in, that's totally fine. It works as well. All right, so we've got a turned right side out square Elastic attached at two corners on both sides with an opening on the bottom. Now all we have to do is top stitch and create our pleats. Now the pleats I'm making are approximately, I don't know, three eighths of an inch to a quarter of an inch deep. So I'm just kind of making like a Z with my fabric so that there's about three eighths or less um, little sandwich there. I'm pinning it, make another one. So the pleats, the end of this pleat matches up at the beginning of that pleat. And a third one. This allows it, these kind of creates like almost like a gather, 
so that it's a little tighter around the sides of your face, the back of your cheeks. So we've got this area that's just flat, some pleats, and this area that's flat. That makes it so it's wider here to accommodate the shape of your face. This is not rocket science as far as, there's not like really a right or wrong way to do this, um, your pleats. Um, I have been messing with it all day long. You can definitely measure these if you prefer. If this uh, finger pinning and eyeballing it makes you uncomfortable, but I am pretty comfortable with it. The only thing I do is, you'll notice I was kind of holding it up uh, to here just because there's some marks, random marks that I thought, eh, let's make sure that the top edge is about even with each other, which it's not. Let me redo that. What did I use before? Okay, the width of that. You just want it to um, look somewhat horizontal from left to right on your face. So we don't have any wonky pleats. However, I feel like some of mine for sure will still end up being wonky because I'm really focusing on how many masks I can make in one day. I'm gonna compare my two sides, see if they're somewhat close to each other, similar pleating. All right, I'm gonna start on one of the pleated edges and I'm gonna start by, right, this is gonna be really close to the edge because I'm wanting to catch um, the seam on the inside. This is a reinforcement stitch stitching as well as it helps it lay flatter and um, it's also reinforcing those elastic bands in place and it's, um, creating the pleats. Okay, this edge, as long as you didn't make it too humongous, but you made it more like close to what your fingers needed to flip it, you can, by pulling it, it kind of rolls itself in on its own. And so as long as we're stitching fairly close to that edge, um, we should be closing up that hole as we go over it. I go to my other side, needle down, press her foot up, turn. Um, making sure I don't sew over my needles. I'm taking them out as I get close to them, but still kind of pinning the, that pleat down with my fingers so that I don't undo the pleats. I wanna make sure I stitch them in place. Needle down, turn on presser foot. All right, press her foot down, stitch across the top. Now that I've gotten to the other edge, I just have one more thing I want to do, which is I just back, I'm back stitching just a couple times so that I can then do a second line of stitching on either of the elastic sides. But I did space that stitching a little further away from the edge. Um, you could just continue stitching across the bottom. Uh, but I don't I don't want that many lines of stitching across every single edge and then just to make it match the alternate side back stitch stitch across back stitch again take it out can you see that there's two lines of stitching here they're spaced from each other the most inside one is about three-eighths from the edge aka I used the edge of the presser foot as a guide again and now you have a finished medical mask. Um, if you have some fun labels that you enjoy, you can stitch that on somewhere. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch mine on here, and it's done.